Good afternoon. Our gathering song is number 581, Many and Great, 581. Please stand. Many and great are bearers of the word, the cry speaks, the heart seeks. Gathered as one, we listen to the word and share the meal of new birth. The wheat grows from springtime to fall, the wine flows. In Christ we recall the sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are seeds upon the field, the hand sows, the seeds grow. Take now and eat the covenant fulfilled, the bread of promise and life. The wheat grows from springtime to fall, the wine flows, in Christ we recall the sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are voices of despair. The rain falls, the voice calls. Take now and drink the wine of hope and care. Our cup of blessing we share. The wheat grows from springtime to fall. The wine flows in Christ we recall the sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are pebbles in the sand, the sun glows, the wind blows. Take now and spread the word to every land, the word of goodness and hope. The wheat grows from springtime to fall, the wine flows, in Christ we recall the sharing of our lives with one and all. The Lord, uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You are 
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance to the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Shall reign forever your God. Oh, 
Zion through all generations, Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, widows have it tough in Old Testament times, in Jesus' time, in our own time. 
whether it is a widow, the widow that Elijah asks for food and water from, uh, the widow who gives so generously in the gospel, or the widow today dealing with the loss of her husband and the myriad tasks she must now undertake on her own. They all have it tough. Today they are presented to us as examples of right living, and it is worth exploring this a little. Let's take the first widow. So she's at her wit's end, right? She's lost everything. Widows had basically no rights in the ancient world. She is down to her last bit of flour and oil and laments that she and her son will now die. Now, I don't think she plans to take her own life and the life of her son, but she realizes that they will have no food and they will just die of starvation. She has no hope. Everything will be gone, and there's nothing left to do but die. That's her perception of what's going on. At first, it doesn't seem like the best example for us, but, but the story gets better. It gets better. You know, Elijah experienced the same sort of desire to die. He was being pursued by those who were seeking his death. He was given food by an angel, and he didn't even want to eat. Now the tables are turned, though. We see as, as the angel provided for him, and he knew God's help, now he will give this widow the opportunity to know God's help. It seems she does not even believe in God, though, at first. When she encounters Elijah, she refers to his God as if it's not her God. But something changes. She trusts in Elijah's words that she will have plenty of oil and flour to make it through the drought. Maybe it's her only alternative. But I think there's more going on than just that. She does as he tells her, and the blessing comes her way. She has, in that action, put her faith in God. And God is taking care of her now through the prophet Elisha. Okay, let's look at the widow in the gospel. She is already demonstrating her trust in God. So complete is her trust in God that she gives all that she had to live on. It is the completeness of her trust in God that makes this seemingly meager contribution really so profound. Now, I wish I could tell you that it is just that simple to trust God to just give everything to him. But there is more to it than that, more than just material giving or material sustenance. Some have responded to this call in dramatic ways. We call them the saints. Think of St. Francis of Assisi that gave up all his riches, all that he had to live on, to follow the Lord. But what we are to give is really an individual thing. We are, of course, all of us to give with our entire heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. As we were told last week, that's what's important. But we have to ask ourselves is, is God on the top of the list that we give to? Is the organization entrusted with passing on the teachings of God that has done so for centuries, millennia, uh, though imperfectly at times? Is that on the top of the list? Is that first? Or is it just given what is left over? Whatever is left after every other option is exhausted. The scriptures are clear about giving. 
We are to give the first portion to God, not the last. We are to give according to what we have. It's a planned thing. It is to spread the gospel, to support church's efforts, uh, support the church's efforts, especially the relief of others. But we are not to give to the point that we impoverish ourselves. The church is not asking that. God is not asking that of us. He's asking for a cheerful giver. So how do we give and be cheerful about it? Well, one of the things is that it is a planned proportionate giving that it is not just something accidental or something just decided based on what we may uh, have available to us at the moment when we go by the collection basket. I am certain that the Lord will support this church, will encourage people to support it. Over the past couple of months, things have not been looking too good for us with regard to our financial position. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. But I know that the resources are available. I know that we have done everything that we can to cut back on things and to economize. But that only gets us so far. What is left is the encouragement of more giving, of more giving. And I understand that people have uh, difficulty with that and I'm not asking for a particular percentage increase or something like that for each person that would not be fair because I feel people have different situations what I am asking you to do is to carefully consider and prayerfully consider your giving to the church and to decide is it possible for me to give more so that the church can continue? We can continue paying our bills and continue keeping the lights on and so on. Continue paying salaries for our employees. I, I ask for that prayerful consideration and that we look at this giving, again, in a planned proportionate way. We think about what is reasonable what can be done. And we make a plan for how to give, whether it's once a month, once every week, whatever, whatever works best for you. Online giving, as we still have, or um, uh, your contributions through the mail, or through um, the offertory baskets that we have out at each Mass. This whole idea of planned and proportionate giving is something that came to me years before I went into the seminary. It was something that was presented to me at the parish I was attending at the time. And at first I was a bit skeptical because I was one of those people that just kind of gave whatever I happened to have available to me at the moment and put it in the collection. But I decided to, you know, test this idea and see, okay, so I took a good look at my budget. I decided what proportion I was able to give. And I started giving that on a regular basis, each paycheck. Surprisingly, as it may seem, I was getting paid every week at that time. It was, uh, it was an interesting thing. Every Friday we got paid. Um, so I took that first portion, and that was what I decided first what was going to happen what would happen with that money and set that aside and gave it to the church. To my surprise, at the end of the year, I discovered that I had saved more money than I had in previous years. Unconsciously, though, I didn't take some sort of special effort to do that. What happened was, as I made that commitment to the Lord to give that planned amount, he blessed me and helped me, I think not particularly you know, consciously, 
but um, had me think differently about the resources that I had. And I think just my spending changed as a result of that. I had different priorities, different ways of looking at things. It was not my plan to save more money by the end of the year, but that's what happened. And that's the way the Lord responded to my giving, my planned giving. So this is just one way, just one of the things, one of the things that, that, uh, uh, that can happen. I imagine the Lord has great blessings planned for us in all kinds of different ways. What he wants of us, though, most importantly, is that first portion. He wants that from us. He doesn't want to be left last. He wants to be first in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls. He wants to be first in our pocketbooks, too. That's an aspect of life as well. It's all part of us. So please give a prayerful consideration to your giving. Um, uh, there was uh, something that um, our former bishop said that um, always kind of struck me because I didn't really know quite how to take it, but I'll say, it, say what he said. He said, God will never be outdone in generosity. And I was thinking, this is not a competition, though. Because it's not like we just give up because we know we can't outdo God. What we want to recognize from this is that God is generous to us. And as we recognize that generosity to us and how he deals with us in so many ways, so many blessings, we come to... Um, an understanding of being grateful for what he, was, he has given us and a desire to give back. God never asks us to give back everything. He never asks us to do that. But he does expect a proportionate gift back, some portion of what you have been given. Whether it comes to the forgiveness that we offer others. I'm sure we, could, we can see in our own lives, and I in mine, that I have been forgiven by God a lot more than I have forgiven others. God works like that. He gives so abundantly. We look to the cross as the best sign of that, to the Eucharist that we receive. Jesus' sacrifice for us, complete, giving everything, his entire life. Everything. And again, he only asks for a portion in return. Only a part of it. Only a bit. So take the example of the, of the widows to heart today. Take that risk. Receive the blessings. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing the Lord's gracious love for us, we pray first for church leaders that may they be faithful stewards of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders and all who provide support services to veterans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For veterans and all who have served our country, especially those still struggling with the effects of war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For widows and widowers and for their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, those who cannot work, those who have no shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all here at our celebration and for all who seek God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer the Mass today for the health, well-being of Pauline Wahlberger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, you help all who seek your presence. Graciously touch us with your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is number 402, There is a Longing 402. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating the mystery, uh, in mystery, the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants listed in our Book of Remembrance, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion song is number 458, Shepherd Me, O God, 458. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by 
the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, please be seated. For your convenience, uh, baskets are available in the narthex for regular offertory and second collections. A uh, reminder, don't forget tonight to turn your clocks back in one hour. Um, I wish I could tell the people that are coming to 10 o'clock mass that right now <laughs> so that they don't show up at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. But anyway, um, let's see. Uh, we have the Book of Remembrance here, for, which will be here for the month of November. Uh, please add names to this book of people who are deceased that you would like us to pray for, and we'll continue to pray for them throughout the month of November. Uh, please join the St. Joan of Arc parishioners in praying the rosary together before the weekend masses. Uh, the rosary starts at 4.25 p.m. on Saturday and 9.25 a.m. on Sunday. Join us next Friday, November 12th, for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament beginning at 7 p.m. Uh, next Saturday, November 13th, you are invited to join the Knights of Columbus for their exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternal benefits ceremony and luncheon. The ceremony will take place at uh, St. Joan of Arc Church, and then the luncheon will take place at Apollo Flame Restaurant, where there will be a presentation on some of the fraternal benefits available to members of the Knights of Columbus and their families. Uh, Linda Bailey would like to speak with us now about homebound ministry. My first experience with homebound ministry was when my neighbors, Jeff and Kathy Boyer, brought communion to me while I was uh, isolated at home for six weeks. It was a joy because it brought me a feeling that my community still, I was still part of it. I was trained, someone asked me, could I come and do this? I had training. Alicia and Mike were very kind. I had a double training. And they introduced me to many people that I didn't even know from our parish. I met some wonderful ladies and gentlemen and began my ministry. At one point, I was asked to see a lady that came to this mass that I was a nodding acquaintance with while she was laid up from surgery. She has become a dear friend, one that we enjoy our time together still, even though she's able to come now. Communion to people means a lot. I have a gentleman who's been a longtime parishioner. Sometimes I'm the only person that he sees each week. And the joy that we experience together is amazing. Whether it's celebrating the Braves win or whether it's passing on Halloween candy to one another. It is a wondrous experience. We are bringing God's love and, and his, his life and his graces to people who otherwise don't have a chance to come. Yes, they can see us if they are able to watch us on, on video, but for some of them, that's, it's not in their wheelhouse because they are older and don't have that idea. You can fit your visitation in whenever it's convenient for you and for the person you're seeing. All I know is that it has brought me more grace and more joy than anything else I've done in this church. And I've met some wonderful people, and I look forward to meeting other wonderful people who are only looking for the gift of God's love brought to them. 
If you have any interest, please call the church office this week and sign up. We won't leave you abandoned if you have questions or if you need further guidance. Someone should be available to help you in your first couple of visits and to, to give you some direction. As Jeff told you at one point, they give you a playbook. And the, the prayer, that, the prayer that, that Father read this evening as our following prayer is in that prayer book. And I've used it other time, at times when I finish my prayers with the people that I visit. It's a wonderful ministry. I hope some of you will think about it and join us in spreading Jesus to our friends and our other parishioners. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. In honor of the upcoming Veterans Day, we will sing number 735, America the Beautiful, 735, verses 1 and 3.